During World War II, entire resistance networks vanished beneath the earth, literally. While most people think of makeshift bunkers or shallow foxholes, there existed a form of underground shelter so efficient, so concealed, and so resilient that even reconnaissance aircraft couldn't detect it. After the war, it wasn't mass-produced or shared publicly. In fact, several Allied and Axis authorities restricted its civilian replication, fearing its use in insurgency or illegal concealment. Yet the principles behind this forgotten shelter are not only ingenious, but deeply practical for anyone studying history, survival tactics, or off-grid engineering. The design combined stealth insulation and endurance into one compact underground refuge that could keep a person alive and undetected for weeks. The method didn't rely on high-tech materials or modern tools. It relied on understanding soil layers, airflow, and human adaptability. What began as wartime necessity evolved into a masterclass in underground living, one that modern survivalists can still learn from today. The secret lay in how it controlled temperature and scent. The shelter's genius wasn't in its shape, but its layering. Fighters in occupied territories like Poland, France, and Yugoslavia built what were called earth chambers or bottle burrows. These weren't just holes in the ground, they were engineered ecosystems. Builders dug below the frost line, typically about three to four feet deep in temperate zones, which ensured a consistent internal temperature of about 10 to 13 degrees Celsius or 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. That meant, you know, no freezing nights and no sweltering days. Above the chamber, they installed an air gap filled with dry leaves, straw, and in some cases, woven reed mats. This acted as both insulation and soundproofing. The entrance tunnel was narrow, angled downwards, and sealed by a clay soil mixture that absorbed moisture and trapped heat. But the most critical feature, the one modern campers and preppers often overlook, was the scent baffle. Resistance engineers realized that detection dogs could sniff out human scent through airflow leaks. To counter this, they built small ventilation shafts disguised as root tunnels or old tree hollows and filtered outgoing air through charcoal and moss. That simple trick eliminated human odour while maintaining oxygen flow. Anyone studying survival shelter design should take note. Controlling air and temperature through natural filters is far more effective than depending on synthetic covers or heaters. If a trench or bunker doesn't breathe properly, moisture accumulates and rot sets in. But the World War II underground shelters solved both, creating dry, breathable warmth using soil and plant matter alone. Each structure followed a similar pattern. An oval or bottle-shaped chamber about six feet long, four feet wide, and three feet high. That shape prevented collapse by evenly distributing soil pressure, especially if reinforced with woven willow branches or wooden planks scavenged from destroyed barns. Builders laid a base of sand or ash mixed with crushed limestone to absorb moisture and, you know, deter pests. On top of that went a mat of straw, leaves or animal hides for bedding. A trench-style tunnel, typically 18 inches wide, connected the chamber to the surface with a tight-angled exit leading to a disguised cover 
sometimes a hollowed tree base, other times a false mound covered in moss. This design allowed the entrance to remain invisible even at close range. For those studying or replicating similar systems today, the geometry is, well, essential. Circular or arched roofs resist soil weight better than flat ones. For insulation, you'll want to use at least 12 inches of packed earth over the roof, followed by organic matter like straw or dried grass before sealing it all with clay. This combination, you see, keeps the interior between 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit all year round, even in freezing weather, and all without any fuel source. After liberation, Allied intelligence reports actually found thousands of these underground chambers, some of them still intact months later. Many were so well hidden that locals only discovered them when machinery, you know, actually sank through the roof. Military analysts recognized just how effective these shelters were for clandestine activity. In certain occupied territories, partisans actually survived entire winters underground, conducting raids by night and returning before dawn. After the war, authorities really feared their misuse. In regions with political unrest, an undetectable underground system could, you know, hide weapons, fugitives, or even resistance movements. In countries like the Soviet Union and parts of Eastern Europe, civilian manuals referencing these shelters were, well, confiscated or rewritten. The designs survived only in scattered wartime diaries and local oral histories. The irony is that what was once considered a threat to national control is now a masterwork of environmental design, proof that necessity can produce brilliance. While building such shelters today requires adherence to local laws and safety standards, the principles are timeless. If you construct an emergency dugout, prioritize drainage first. Always slope the entrance tunnel slightly upward into the chamber to prevent rainwater from flooding in. Reinforce the roof with curved poles or salvaged timber spaced evenly to distribute weight. For ventilation, install two air holes, one low to draw in fresh air and one higher on the opposite side to release warm, moist air. Filter each with charcoal cloth or natural moss. To test airflow, hold a candle inside. If the flame flickers gently, the balance is right. For insulation, a 3 to 1 soil to organic layer ratio works best. Three parts compacted soil for every one part organic padding like straw or pine needles. These small structural principles transform a crude hole into a livable microclimate. In extreme conditions, they can make the difference between surviving the night and, well, succumbing to cold or damp. The World War II underground chamber was never meant for comfort. It was meant for survival under total occupation. Yet it represents something profound human ingenuity under pressure. Every layer, vent and curve told a story of adaptation, of learning from the earth itself. Understanding these designs doesn't glorify war. It honours resilience. It reminds us that survival isn't about stockpiling gear. 
It's about mastering principles that work when all else fails. The banned shelters of the Second World War may have been buried in history, but their lessons remain as relevant as ever for anyone studying fieldcraft, preparedness, or human endurance. If you found this breakdown valuable, make sure to subscribe to In the Beginning for more forgotten survival tactics, wartime innovations, and lost engineering wisdom. Share it with fellow history buffs and survival enthusiasts, the kind of people who know that the best defences are often hidden just beneath the surface.